Oh, welcome to the live stream. Wow, hold on, I got a tweet about this. Uh, hold on, wrong site, right site. So, I uh, wrong site again, but also, oh, the other right side I need to be on. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, this is the design of my new office. Like, the cheeky little animations you see here are uh, brought to you by Moby Video Editor Plus 2020. Uh, you see the stars, like, you know, floating and everything. You see, like, oh, the, the, what seems to be, like, glitching frame. Like, all of this can be done on that. <laughs> I really do love, like, what I do. So, hold on, yet again. We'll get into like, oh, you know, like how I feel about oh, the Power Rangers franchise I is here in a second. as I make that post. Uh, now, uh, honestly, like, I'm trying to keep up with stream chat right now, and like... Yeah. Alright, so we're, we're, we're good. So, Power Ranger. I want to talk about my history before we actually do, like, Oh, the reaction to the old school, like, 1990, I think it was four live action movie. Uh, I actually want, I actually made an announcement on this about on Twitter, you know, like, obviously I want to watch this movie with y'all because it's like one of the movies that we can all agree that it's really good. I mean, I mean it's kind of good, really. It's not the best, okay? It's not the best, but it's certainly not the worst. Uh, it could be better, but, you know, it's dated. The 3D graphics are dated, and I'm so glad that they're not going to do a remaster of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers ever again. When they did that remaster of that one movie, I was thinking, like, what were they smoking? Let me put on the music I wanted to put on earlier oh, and I brought a, uh, yeah. uh, so uh, let me turn it down a bit over voice so uh, this is the song Mantha Maria uh, it's one of the Power Rangers songs it's like I find it m very peaceful and soothing like I've always believed this song can you know in, in a way like a smooth the savage beast. <laughs> oh, by the way, if you're wondering why I'm like this, it's very, very simple. I did this pose for the art of a certain video, and I just wanted to show it off here today on live stream. Of course, like, oh, you see my hands around like the white galaxy lion morpher <laughs> of mine. It's really not a. It's not supposed to be a morpher, but you know, it is, in a way, it's more like, well, I'm not going to go into it, that'll bore y'all. But, uh, yeah. So, I want to talk about the history of my, my thoughts on the Power Ring. Growing up as a person in the 90s, I'm going to be real. Very very much of a childhood memory that I hold quite dear. Uh, now what I'm seeing it, um, I've always known Power Rangers are Super Sentai ever since I was around the age of 15 because I found out, oh wait a minute, mother fricker, this came from overseas? I had no idea. <laughs> uh, it came from overseas, and like whatever, whatever, whatever. 
because I'm not going to argue with the results, you know? I'm not going to argue. I loved it. I loved watching Power Rangers and as a kid, as a young adult, and for a brief while as an older adult. The series as I see it now, I want to mention. It's pulling away from the official source, uh, and it's because Hasbro wants to have more rights for the boys and properties of it, make it their own thing. Uh, I believe that's a mistake uh, in all, all due, uh, due feelings. It is a mistake. It will always be a mistake. I cannot be more troubled than I am now. I'm not knowing what uh, Netflix and Hasbro and all of them, what they're doing. I have heard things in the mail that, oh, uh, Netflix let them go. And Hasbro's taken over, like, the filming rights, or, like, filming rights. I don't know. I literally do not care right now for Power Rangers. Current Power Ranger shows that have been out. After, like, the past couple of shows. Oh, what's the one that I'm thinking of? Oh, the one new Dino one that came out with, like, the Alien Guardian and everything. That thing was like, oh my god, I could not wrap my head around it. It was so bad. And even before then, I noticed the shows were getting worse. Uh, what I always cherished about the Power Rangers, and we're going to get into that, is right now, is the martial arts. When you watch Power Rangers, what's the one thing you think of that makes it stand out from any other live action show? Any other. You know, any other show in general. Is it the Megazords? Maybe. Uh, if it's, is it the Monsters? Maybe. For me, it was the martial arts prowess show. It's all like the moves, the fighting moves, the choreography, the obviously feel like, oh, they're in actual combat in their human forms. But when things need, go to push the shove, you know, they activate their morpher and they, they use the morphing grid to become superheroes. And for me, that was like the best. I not only saw like, oh, um, you know, superpowers, but I saw normal people saving the day with a little bit of enhancements because of the morphing grid. Um, not going to lie, it was actually something. It was different what I was used to of seeing on television as a kid. I was invested in it. I loved it. I loved them like, it looked like, oh, they're actually punching the putties or kicking them. And you know, like they're actually getting in there and making you feel like, oh, wow, they're winning. But when they uh, suddenly like things turn for the worse, they're like, oh no, what are our heroes gonna do? You know, like, Oh, they lost the first fight because, like, they underestimated their enemy and they went in, like, all half cocked and amateurish. <laughs> I liked that story writing. I really did. Like, they could always handle the putty patrol or the tank uh, warriors or, like, the cog machines from Zeo or even the Piranatrons. I loved the Piranatron song. That was original. I loved it. <laughs> that was a good song. It's, it's sad you can't find it anywhere on YouTube. I mean, you on occasion you can find the Tango Warrior song. But it was never fully completed. Piranatron's. It was so silly because Turbo, like in Super Sentai, was the comedy series. It was um, Super Sentai Gojo Ranger. 
And the thing was, it was supposed to be comedic. It was supposed to be funny. It's how the series went. And when it was turned into Power Rangers Turbo, because, you know, Power Rangers Gojo, like, doesn't really roll off the tongue for, like, global markets. It doesn't sound speedy or fast enough. They wanted to go, like, with, like a super fast racer car, car motif, so what makes sense for that? Turbo. Shift in the turbo. When you shift in the turbo, it's literally like, Oh, you're hitting the NOS, you're going really fast, you feel the adrenaline pumping through your veins as you're or literally driving through, ooh, like the streets and all that kind of stuff. That was cool to me. I loved that in Turbo. The two vehicles I loved the most, though, was Lightning Cruiser and Storm Blaster. Those two vehicles, I loved the death, okay? Like, they had, they were sentient cars. It was new to the series. We didn't get anything like that in Zeo or even that of Power Rangers through the several iterations. It was so unique to see sentient moving cars. And Storm Blaster, you know, can hitch a ride with his storm hook. But Lightning Cruiser, there's a reason why it was called Lightning Cruiser. It was smart, it was good marketing. It could turn into a flying car. That was cool. I love that. That that was epic. Everything about Lightning Cruiser was really neat. And between the two, I was only able to find Lightning Cruiser as a kid. I ended up walking into Kmart. I'm sure, like at least for like a lot of Americans growing up in the '90s, they remember Kmart. Okay, they remember Kmart. And they remember, like, how clean it used to be compared to the 2000s. Because when going out of business, you know, like, less employees. Kmart's were a freaking mess. There was toys on the floor, clothes just everywhere. Uh, open, like, products. Uh, <laughs> damaged Yu-Gi-Oh! tins on the shelves. And, like, Pokemon tins. It, it was wild, it was wild. But I got Lightning Cruiser from Kmart. I was looking everywhere for Lightning Cruiser and Storm Blaster. I knew they were gonna be like next big thing for Power Rangers back then. They even came with a little like Power Ranger figurine of, you know, Red Turbo and Blue Turbo, you know, Rangers. And they came with like exclusive little sec accessories um, the Red Ranger er, with Lightning Cruiser came with the Turbo Analyzer and version of the item. And then Storm Blaster came with the uh, Turbo Analyzer Blaster. I never got Storm Blast, but I got Lightning Cruiser. I had it from here. I loved it. Lightning Cruiser was one of the best, like, toys from my childhood I can remember. That was so cool. Oh. Um, I want to reminisce of my first Megazord, though. I was young, you know, like, I was a kid. I was in the Power Rangers. My mom knew I was. He ran into the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Megazord at Goodwill of all places. It was still in the box. It was missing a couple of things, like, Oh, the Triceratops horns. It was missing the Megazord's cannon. You know. <laughs> but it still had the Zord, the giant blade, and the, uh, like, different Zords to it. And the shield, Mastodon head for the shield. Uh, the Mastodon's tusks were missing, too. I loved that thing. I had it for many of you. I even took it to school for show and tell. And, like, some of the kids were like, you're so lucky. That thing's like fifty dollars. How do you? How the hell do you get it? I said, "Mother got it from me for from Goodwill." <laughs> uh, it was one of my favorite toys growing up as a kid. Uh, from the Ranger figurines I had, I've had uh, when I was growing up as a kid. I had the Red Ranger. I had the Blue Ranger. I had the Black. I had the Pink. I never had the yellow or green range. I 
never even had the white major either, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> because, like, holy crud. Um, yeah, the original Power Rangers show is very special to the series. Like, they did fight choreography. They did stunts like that. Of course, when it came to the original cast, they really didn't have, like, oh, a professional, like, martial art cast. They only had two people that were good in martial arts. That was Austin St. John and Jason David Frank. These two had martial art backgrounds, and the others had to learn on the fly or just, like, do their own thing to stand out. Um, Billy Yost, you know, like, the woman that played Trini, I forget her name, but she, Trini will always be best friend in my eyes. I was in Camp Trini. Uh, let's see here. Zach? Zach, my man. Always best Black Ranger. Johnny Young Balash will be the one with the most potential because of, like, all of his voice acting and all that kind of stuff. I really do love that. But, Zach. Woo! Zach, I'm dang. Dude had the moves! Oh, he can do that. He can do that all day long. Okay, like, the actor of Zach was golden. He was the one with the most personality and the most approved. Other than Billy. Uh, you know, Billy was the, he was the bright. Zach was the style. Uh, Kimberly was the care. Trini was the tomboy. Uh, Jason was the leader. And eventually Tommy was the evil Green Ranger. And then became good seeking redemption. And from everything he's done. The main core cast of that, so iconic. The script writing was the best. I'm not gonna lie, out of multiple all of the franchise, the script writing for that was golden. I can understand where they tried to capture that many times, but failed to live up to its expectation. I will admit, Despite how much you try to re-innovate an older formula, you'll never have the feeling in sensation it once had. It never will. It never has. You'll never be able to replace that feeling. That gave those people those memories. I've seen just about every franchise from the original Power Rangers going up to Power Rangers Mega Force. I do have a lot of personal gripes about Mega Force, but I do no I did notice things about their acts. We'll talk about that later. I want to talk about obviously when the White Ranger appeared. FYI, you know if you have not seen the original show, like spoilers beat your head. Captain, spoilers be ahead. Uh. <laughs> so, if y'all didn't know, White Ranger uh, came out to be Tommy. <laughs> and it wasn't by mere, like, accident. They were going to go with a different actor. Back then, I didn't know that. Uh, some people knew that. But, they didn't know what the rest of the fan base was doing. Because, um, Jason David Frank was going to move over to, uh, you know, VR Troopers. He was going to be the main lead to that show. And the VR Troopers main lead was going to be the new White Ranger. There was such an outlandish outcry by the fan base for Tommy to return. They could not ignore. And they already made the setup for it. I bring this up because in my school, there was a bit of a bet going on. Like, when, like, obviously, the bit of sneak peek of the first episode of 
the new ranger being made, obviously. Like, the rangers were getting overpowered. Lord Zed was coming, becoming stronger. You know, obviously, like, villains getting worse, yo. Uh, Lord Zed himself was becoming more of a threat, and the rangers needed help. So, Zordon and Alpha went to the, uh, like, back room chambers, I would put it, and they started developing a new power, a new PowerPoint, and lore this pissed off ninja. Do you know how you piss off somebody that already made the power beforehand? <laughs> you create your own. Now, this made ninja mad. Ninja would be mad, yo. He was angry. <laughs> but he eventually accepted it. Okay? Like. <laughs> oh. But, uh, yeah, so. Ninja would be mad. At the time. But we didn't know that. In my school, I grew up in going to an elementary before I dropped out, I will mention one of the things that going on, and it was bet who was going to be the White Ranger. In my heart of hearts, I knew it was going to be the actual Tommy. Because it was always already set up. After Tommy lost his Green Ranger powers as, the, as they were stolen, and then he defeated a monster, or the Rangers the monster that took power that made the evil Power Rangers, of course. Tommy really destroyed the crystal that was using the evil Green Ranger to make these Zed Rangers. As that's what Lord Zed called them. The Zed Ranger. Okay? Um Yeah, I remember that. Well freaking original <laughs> But uh yeah the Rangers were caught in an energy magical force field the only way to set them free was for Tommy to destroy the crystal. He had to get through Goldar to do it. Tommy has defeated Goldar on countless occasions as a human. Even though Goldar constantly boasts, as I'm going to do my best Goldar impression. <laughs> no man mortals ever beats me. Not even you, Tommy Oliver. Basically, Goldar right there. My best impression without my voice slowly ripping my, ripping my vocal cords asunder. <laughs> uh, like, yeah. Tommy has beaten Goldar on multiple occasions without his power. So has Jason. You know, Jason was the first, actually. I will be honest. Jason was the first to beat Goldar in combat without needing the more. And Goldar had such pride and, like, joy and, like, he's never known defeat by a mortal without, them. like, being in a more state. Jason did that first. Tommy did it eventually. They Jason as well and the others. And he did it again in this episode. But as soon as he destroyed the crystal, Green Ranger's power is what was left were gone. They disappeared. They disappeared. They weren't around anymore. They vanished. Power was gone. End of that episode, you find out Kimberly comforts Tommy. Don't worry, Tommy. You'll always be a ranger. We'll find some way to bring your powers back. To new ones. They set this up. And they were going to go with somebody else. That was a mistake. It would be a tragic mistake. 100%. But the fans had their voice heard. They flooded Saban with, like, letters. Millions. And even more than that, of letters say, bring Tommy back, make him the White Ranger. And they had to hold off this episode for a while because they had to retake everything. 
And when, like, obviously the episode finally premiered, it was Tommy. I went to school that Monday because uh, Power Rangers would air every Friday here in the U.S. I went there. And lunchroom, obviously everybody was in the bathroom in the lunchroom. In the lunch uh, material, because, like, this is where the bet was taking place in the local bathroom and the, like, uh, lunch building, as I should put it. I walk in there. They give me the dirtiest looks. Every one of them, my friends, the bullies, the prep kids, preppy kids, the sport kids, they all look at me and they go like, you fucking knew, didn't you? You knew you had insider information. <laughs> And, like, we were all putting up, like, five or ten dollars. Um, don't do that, everyone. Just, just don't. Don't ever put a bet like that in the school or, like, a building or, like, anything like that. Because you get in trouble, yo. You'd be in trouble. Legally. And so would the, like, business or, or b people that own the building. But we were kids, we didn't know better in the 90s, okay? Like, we didn't know how the law worked. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I ended up winning the bet. But, didn't mean I didn't get all my reward. Under 40% of all the people that made the bet only paid. Okay, because it was my friends that were okay when they felt like, yeah, you're the guy that knows about these things and have these feelings. More than likely, you knew this was going to happen, didn't you? I told them, they set it up. They set it up earlier, okay? Like, it was mentioned that he was going to come back. You don't remember when he lost the green powers against the monster? And my friends were like, Oh, uh, we forgot. <laughs> They're like, we forgot. And that's what they're like, all right, all right, you deserve this. And like, I got a couple of fives and a couple of tens. And like, I just fitted them all at the snack concession stand in the cafeteria. Like, drinks and like candy for like my friends and like, all the other kids, like, in that cafeteria where they saw what I did with the money, they're like, we should have just given them the money. <laughs> we could have been a part of that, too. <laughs> uh, let it be known, you shouldn't try to impress other people, okay? Especially people that have no respect for you. Uh, that's the thing. So I ended up winning that bet. Fast forward a couple years later, well, you're like a year later when I entered the fourth grade. Power Ranger CO came out. Uh, I was constantly on the playground, you know, having to survive from, like, everybody that was beating the hell out of me. I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't the most favorite guy on the playground, because, like, I was a nerd. I, I was the one guy nobody liked because, like, oh, I was weird, I was a nerd, I was a freak in their eyes. I didn't like sports, I didn't like wrestling, you know, like, I didn't like all, all this, what they like, so they go like, you're weird, we're gonna beat the shit out of you. <laughs> um, yeah, so, my parents ended up, you know, keeping me from watching Power Rangers CO, because they thought, oh, it's Power Rangers is making them fight back. No, was I supposed to lay on the ground and take it? Was I supposed to just be, like, be beat the hell up? Hell no! I was gonna get beat up from the shit. Okay? I was gonna be- I wasn't gonna be the one to literally be the government mule on the ground. I come back. 
And uh, I didn't get to watch Zia because of that as a kid. I watched it later on, years later. Uh, to me, Zio is like, it's a thing. It's not one of my favorite versions of the franchise, but it is a thing. I understand like there's a weakness to the Zio crystals because of water. That is the dumbest weakness I've ever heard for Super but that's not the last time we would hear of water being a weakness to something in Power Rangers. We'll get to that one in a bit. Uh, next show I picked up was Turbo. Like I said, I love Turbo. I love the comedy. I love the action. I love the vehicles and all that. You know, I love the fight choreography in it. And then by the end of the series, you find out, spoilers by the way, BOOM! Like, Power Rangers base was destroyed. It was literally gone. By Diva Talks. Okay? Diva Talks blew it the fuck up. And they lost their powers. Rangers had no choice. They had to leave Dustin behind. They go, like, alright, we gotta go to space to find Zordon to find out where we can get new powers. They go to an excess space station. They hijack! A space shuttle. They go into space. They don't technically hijack a space shuttle. They just like talk to like that and go like, "Hey, um, we lost our powers. We're the Power Rangers, and we need to go into space to get our powers back. You know, we need to defend the Earth." And like, normally when people at a big government facility like NASA hear that stuff, they go like, "You're fucking crazy." Get the hell out. Security! But no, they bought into this because it's part of the story. And they end up in the space shuttle. They launch into space. What happens next? They run into the Astro Mega Ship. The Astro Mega Ship activates its like tractor beam and just like sucks up the ship oh. into its like docking bay. Because I found out, oh, wait a minute, this thing's, like, able to give me my head back. It has the potential of giving me a new head to my Megazord 4. I love that. It's so stupid. It makes it seem like the Astro Mega Ship is sentient, and it is. Because it's got an onboard computer system named DECA. And, of course, Alpha at this time is like, you know, his programming and circuits are seriously damaged. And after, like, he gets repaired, you know, he's like, Yo, 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 my name's Alpha, how's it going? Like, I hated that Alpha. He sounded like a knockoff rapper, okay? I hated that Alpha. I think that was Alpha 6 or 7, I can't remember. It was so bad. Oh, wait, no, that was Turbo. I think they a, remade the character in space. Yeah, that was Turbo! That's my only gripe about Turbo, is like Alpha's a new voice actor. And in per, uh, personality. Why? Demetria's Alpha is just so freaking... Weird. I did not like it. He would get fixed. And he would have a new personality in Power Rangers Space. It was more like the traditional Alpha. But it still had its own personality. One thing about Alpha I will always remember is him going, ay 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 that, that was a thing. It was so iconic. Memorable about Alpha. With the Alpha and Turbo... Just no. Just no. That is my only gripe with Turbo. That the Alpha there was not Alpha. It was not Alpha. That was something else. I don't know what it is, but it bugged me. It really bugged me. Okay? <laughs> um, yeah. So. <laughs> Next, I want to mention, obviously, they go into space, meet Andros, 
Andros snuck himself in the meeting with the, you know, Dark Masters. Very that of the Dark Masters of the Universe. And you see the return of a certain creature as a new character from the movie. This is Dark Spectre. He's literally the main king of evil. He is the root of all darkness in the universe. Every one of those villains were his pawns, his loyal soldiers, his followers. And when you see this thing, and you've seen the Power Rangers Turbo movie, you go, that's the same thing. Except the one here talks, and the one in Turbo didn't. The movie, eh? Yeah. Also, in Power Rangers in Space, he also got a new color of a new Sixth Ranger, because, like, you know, in the original Power Rangers, we got green and white. Zeo, we got uh, Zeo Gold. In Turbo, we got the uh, Shadow Ranger. You know, like, the Spectre Ranger. I can't remember what his pronunciation is. You know, someone's going to roast me when it goes on YouTube. <laughs> Ported over the YouTube. But, uh, yeah. Uh, this guy had the Phantom Ruby. The little Ruby that had powered his suit and allowed him to transform. Uh, you know, and like, do all this crazy stuff. Phantom Ranger's identity is still not known to this day. People are still trying to guess that guy. His identity and race. Just leave it be, okay? Just, just leave it be. We don't need to know who the Phantom Ranger is. And where he comes from. Sometimes the best thing about a mystery is that of the mystery. The mystery keeps you invested. And looking at, at and you know, wondering. But at the same time, what happens when the mystery is revealed? You either one out of a one out of one hundred percent chance of, you know, satisfaction and disappointment. Let's say theoretically we found out who the Phantom Ranger's identity really was, and it's not on what anyone wanted or expected. There would be a huge outcry of disappointment and anger and frustration. Uh, I, I'm I'm not gonna say that. Some people wouldn't accept it, but you know, in your heart of hearts, when that mystery would be revealed, there would be no point. <laughs> there would be no point for the mystery anymore of the Phantom Ranger. People wouldn't be invested in him anymore. It's kind of like with VTubers like that. When you look at VTubers, when you see VTubers, the one thing that encapsulates you about them is the mystery of them. I will admit that. But I'm different. I chose the humanoid VTuber because guess what? This VTuber, eventually one day, I want to have a cosplay outfit of it. I want to cosplay as myself at conventions. I think that would be so freaking boss. I think so freaking cool. I'm still trying to get down how to co make cosplay on my own. But I don't have the, you know, the the sewing equipment for it. <laughs> I'm not going to color code it. I don't have the sewing equipment for it. Okay? But I do want to cosplay as my own VTuber out of conventions. So, yeah. The one thing about... Like, the mystery of the Phantom Ranger that keeps everybody interested in him is that of the mystery. You love the mystery. You want the mystery to stay. You need the mystery. If the mystery is gone, what's the point? You know? What's the point if the mystery's gone? If it's gone, there's no more intrigue. Or something like that. Alright? I get that. I understand that, and I accept that about the Phantom Ranger. I bring this up because he also shows up in space. He gives the Power Rangers the location of Zordon. 
Listen, Zora. He was a double ganger. He was only an imposter. There was a, an imposter. That's. Oh no! And they find out it was the evil emperor himself, and the you know of a hologram of the evil emperor of the tomb. Ah. Uh, Ipsy. <laughs> that, that is so wild. And I I loved that, but I also hated it. As a kid, I hated when I saw that. But as an adult, I realized, oh, basic villain trope. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's, that's the thing. Uh, you also find out, like... You know, Zordon was never there. And it was all a trap. Like, it was a trap! And it, it was so freaking unique. It was nice and here. Uh, I loved it. Uh, as a, an adult, but I hated it as a kid. It's like, oh, I thought they finally found Zordon. They were going to rescue him. And he was going to help. No! Set the good old track card. Burning Mirror Force. <laughs> okay. And here's the thing. Um, we'll get into like what happens to Zordon later. But the since like Astronoma, you know, was finally remembering who she was beforehand. That evil Daddy found out. Okay, evil Daddy found out and. Did something with her brain. You know, like, he wanted to make her evil, but instead of making her evil, he made her psychotic evil. Made a few screws come loose. <laughs> and she ended up making her own evil team a Power Ranger. The Psycho Ranger. Psycho Black, Psycho Pink, Psycho Blue, Psycho Yellow, Psycho Red. When they first appeared, they were in, you know, the Power Rangers outfits. Something was off, and you think the news crew would have noticed that. I guess they really can't notice certain color or indentations on a suit. What? Because, like, the certain little squares of, like, the different colors of the Rangers that is on every one of the Space Ranger suits were brown. That should have been a dead giveaway. I kind of believe it now how stupid news crews are and interviewers. Look at them now. Game interviewers, like television interviewers. Um, you know, news in general. News in general be dumb, yo. I haven't saying that way too much. They be stupid, okay? It's not that they're stupid. They just don't do the hard work anymore. They don't do investigative journalism. They don't look into, like, why this is the way it is. No. Why didn't it change? Something? Why, why have they learned from their mistakes? They don't care. News journalism don't care about exposing the truth anymore. That died out, I think, in like the 1960s. Late 1960s. And they only worry about Big ladies making big numbers go brrrr. That's them, okay? Like, they only care about big number ratings. And that gives them big buco dollars. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. You know? Um. That's weird. You know that that's how Naruse journalists feel. And it is true. Uh, whoo, that's a spicy one to talk about. But these news journalists couldn't tell the difference. Then here comes the actual Rangers. And the news journalists already said the Power Rangers went evil and they already left. And their camera was destroyed. And the Psycho Rangers engaged the Power Rangers. And their main weapons are similar, but different. 
but uh, yeah. as the Power Rangers, the Space Rangers, weapons are more science fiction. The Psycho Rangers are more element based, as Psycho Black is got a the elemental axe. Psycho Pink has an elemental. I think it was like. I remember that one. I don't know what it looked like, but I do remember the element. She was like heat. Controlled heat. Um, Psycho Blue had a... No, wait, it, Psycho Black, I think it had a spear or a staff. It was Psycho Blue that had the ice axe. He had the ice axe. So, yeah. Um, Psycho Yellow had the uh, Psycho Slinger. That was lightning based. And Psycho Red had the, the Psycho O Flame Bird, that which was fire elemental based. And of course, time and time again we find out our heroes was constantly getting their butts kicked. The Psycho Rangers were beating them because their power source. Oh, I remember the villain's name now. Dark Spectre came from the source of Dark Spectre. Dark Spectre didn't know this. He was like, Astronomer, I'm getting weaker and weaker every day. What is happening? She literally just stepped into her Emperor's face, her daddy, go like, I don't know. You want me to find out? She'd be like that. <laughs> and he goes like, yes, immediately. I feel like somebody's sucking my tits so dry, I can barely move. <laughs> that was Dark Spectre and what the Psycho Rangers were doing to him. Uh, they were sucking up and off that evil pit, okay? Really hard. You see what happens to VTubers, okay? You see what happens to us when we become VTubers? We start talking like this. <laughs> it's hard to change, all right? Uh, so, he's getting weaker. Psycho Rangers are getting stronger. And more out of control. They're getting more and more impatient every battle. Because Astronomer keeps telling them, pull out. You're not, we're not done here. You can have your revenge when I say so. You can destroy them when I feel like it's, you're already. Not that they were ready. She wanted them to keep pulling away Dark Spectre's energy until he was a weak kitten, all right? Like, weaker than a kitten, I'm, I'm gonna be real. It was like a magic cart without tackle or flail. Just having Splash, not on the beach, but out in the middle of a Sahara Desert. That's how weak she wanted Dark Spectre so she could finally destroy him and become the Queen of Evil. This is what happens when you mess with someone's brain with technology like that, alright? Like, like, oh, you're turning good? You need to be my evil harem. You need to be my evil bitch. You know, like, I'm not going to let you go. I'm not going to let you go. So I'm going to do what I should have done in the first place. I'm going to put uh, this and drill it into your fucking brain. <laughs> and it made her worse. It did brain damage, okay? It, it was not good. Um, yeah. Like, what the heck, man? What the heck? You didn't see this coming? She was already like pissed and you made it worse. Holy fucking crud. <laughs> yeah, so that was a thing. And what ended up happening was Blue Ranger came up with a strategy. How about we all become blue. And 
That literally kicked off Psycho Blue, where he's like, no, one of them is the Blue Ranger. And until I find which one it is, he's mine. <laughs> he literally went in there like a dumbass. He got his butt beat. TJ won the day. He didn't go TJ combo. He just went TJ. Beat his ass. And Psycho Blue was the first to fall. Eventually, it would be Psycho Yellow. As there was a bit of a, you know, battle between Psycho Pink and Psycho Yellow. As, yeah. And Psycho Pink would be the second to fall. It wouldn't be Psycho Yellow, my mistake. It was Psycho Pink. Psycho Pink would be the one next to fall. As, well, she'd be dead. I, I, like, she was born. Uh, next, obviously, was their grand plan. They were going to lure out the Rangers on a certain planet. Psycho Black, Yellow, and Red. They were going to use Psycho Yellow take over one of the Megazords. She did that. She took over the Mega Voyager. At this time, the Astro Mega ship was under huge repairs, but they just got the repairs done. And they literally sent down the Astro Mega ship and the Astro Delta and became the Astro Delta Mega ship. By the way, those who can combine, I don't know what to tell you. And it was freaking awesome. Like, you have these giant mini guns on the shoulders. You have these Kong Kong giant, like, flying fists. You know what's cooler than, like, cutting people down with a so an, an electric power sword or even that of a flaming one or a spinning flaming one? No, nah, giant flying fists that literally punch through someone so hard like tissue paper, okay? That was so cool. I love that. Like, I've got two holes in my chest. Why? <laughs> it's like taking a double barrel shotgun point blank to your chest, all right? Don't ask me how I know that. I just do. Uh, and <laughs> leaving two giant holes in your chest. Small ones in the front, giant big ones in the back. <laughs> That was the monster of the week with that thing. Eventually, they would get back, you know, the Mega Voyager. Uh, after, like, purging Psycho Yellow from the system. Psycho Yellow would soon fall after that. Psycho Black and Red would be left. Guess what? Psycho Black would be next. Okay. And then Psycho Red would be the last to fall. They would come back later. But then they would be digitized in these freaking key cards. They make it return. Psycho Pink was the only one that was not digitized into a card. She became a ghost. All right. It became a ghost. <laughs> um. Yeah. So that was the thing. She became a ghost. Ah. Uh, We'll get into that when we talk about the next series. But Space, by the end of it, Psycho Rangers fell. Soon came the end game. Astronema has just became the queen of evil. Zordon has been and like completely like this is completely not destroyed, but he's on his last dying limbs. Alright? He is literally at the end of his lifespan. A being that was supposed to be immortal was being corrupted. Now, take it this way, all right? If Zordon himself, if Andros didn't break that energy tube, Zordon would have become the next great evil. He would have been worse than any being ever. I mean, even more like of a threat than Draken. You know, Tommy that the evil Tommy that combined the Green Ranger and White Ranger powers. Yes, I am aware of that person. Uh, I am aware that uh, in an alternate universe, Tommy didn't go what good. He became worse. So freaking worse. 
Wow. Boom Studio Comics really know how to throw a boom. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, that's thing. Um, but Zordon would have been like, I wouldn't say 10 times. I wouldn't say 20. I would have to say amplified by 100. Okay? Then Dracula. Want to know why? He created powers from the morphing grid. He studied the morphing grid. He made the Power Ranger power. He made the first Megazords. He was the father of the American version of the Power Rangers. He created them in the lore. Imagine if he became the next big evil. With all that knowledge, wisdom, and just scientific prowess, imagine what he could have done if he literally became the next big bad. That's freaking horrifying for the Power Rangers to for more fight. Astronomer was attacking the Earth, but the Earth wasn't the only victim. Other planets were under attack from Rita, Zed, Machine King Empire, they had that Diva Talks. They were all out there. They were invading planet after planet after planet with their forces, attacking all of them. It was a massive galactic global scale invasion. It's all because Astronema became evil. And our Spectre was to blame for all of it. Andros had no choice. Zordon had a dying wish. He asked Andros to destroy his energy tube, his spiral saber, amongst any of the other rangers, was the only weapon that can do it. It was specially made to sever out. The spiral saber, saber. his weapon was meant to sever other kinetic powers. Zordon was a psychokinetic being at this time in that energy tube. He wasn't a living being anymore. He was psychic fragments in an energy tube of what was left of the original Zordon. The spiral saber of Andros was meant to destroy these energy fields, to disrupt them and completely destroy them. That was its specialty. Zordon knew this. That's why he asked me to do it. He said, advise Andro, this cease to exist, but all of the evil in the universe in its current day, day relevancy will be gone. Andros destroys the energy to Gordon psychic connect a, a good energy was released across the cosmos, turning certain villains back into ones they once were, making others literally just turn to pain. The Machine King Empire existed no more. They literally in the wind. They were dust in the wind. Lord Zed and Rita returned back to their mortal coils. Diva talks. I can't remember what happened to Diva Talks. Uh, you know, Astronema was unconscious, but she came back as Rome. Andros returned home. That was so sweet and wholesome. I loved that. Rome came back. He was home. For the time being. <laughs> For the time being. We'll get to that in a minute. Everything was at peace until Earth started becoming overpopulated. Overpopulated to find a new planet to populate. Enter Power Rangers, Lost Galaxy. Lost Galaxy was not supposed to be a thing. Power Rangers in Space was supposed to be the end of the series. 
It was supposed to be done. It was supposed to be over. And when I think about it now as a kid, yeah, I would be upset if that would be the end of the series as a kid. But as an adult and as I'm seeing the series become what it is now, I think it would have been a right move. I think space would have been a right move to end it. If you ask me, in this day and time, I will say the next series, Lost Galaxy, was interesting. So there's several gimmicks they took from like other shows. Let's bring up Sonic the Hedgehog Saturday morning at 8 So everybody remembers the roboticizer, right? Thing that can turn organic life into robots. But in a way, it didn't work like that at empowering um, Lost Galaxy. They had these relics, the name Morph, with the uh, Lost Galaxy beasts, turned them into from beasts to Megazords, turning them into robotic Megazords, sentient ones. That was interesting. They basically used these parts to roboticize giant Galacta beasts into Megazords. That was a good new spin. I liked that. It was creative, it was original. They also brought back the Astro Mega Ship, but instead of being blue now, it's black. I like the black color scheme. I thought it was lazy, but they, Power Rangers is known to retool things from other shows, another scene, okay? And they had the original setups from Power Rangers in space, why not do it? You know, like, why not do it and just do, a, like, a little alternate paint job on the ship while being in that, uh, I, I repeat, I mentioned right now, I'm not gonna repeat it, but the space station. This space station was meant to travel the cosmos to find a new planet to populate. Uh, and the way the Power Rangers morph was through the Astro Saber. I thought uh, maybe I should go with like a team saber myself for like all my VTuber models. I did like, nah, that's bland, that's boring, that's stupid. Um, no original. There would be originality, but at the same time, no creativity. Okay, like I, I thought about that. Really did. Like a team saber, and I, I didn't like that concept. You know. For the VTuber models I'm developing, I'll, I want them to stand out and have their own characteristics and personalities while the people voicing them are being them, you know, in a way. It's their own uh, spin with the character. I do want them to stay tried and true of what the characters are supposed to be. Well, uh, putting their own feel and mix into the character's personality while staying tried and true to the character. That was important, I felt, for the models of the skin. And I do borrow several tropes. Shows that all talk about my experiences growing up watching. Not only as a kid, but as an adult. Another thing I want to mention. Getting back to the... So Lost Galaxy was a fresh new spin. The new Six Ranger wasn't a ranger. It was known as the Magna Defender. A hero that lost his family from his own home world because of the main villain. Killing his only child. Who is seeking revenge. Throughout all the series, we have never had a hero or an anti-hero of the Rangers seeking revenge by any means necessary. This was a fresh new spin on the Sixth Ranger. Magna Defender had a very unique weapon. The Magna Blaster and Magna Saber. It was a double whammy. As... He could pull out the saber and it'd be a sword. He could put the sword back in the hilt, bend it over, and make it a blaster. That was 
so cool. It's a silver ranger in Power Rangers is base though, Andro. I mean, like Zane. His name is Zane. I didn't even cover him because, like, to me, he was just so forgetful of a character. Okay, I know that's a hot take, but Zane was such a forgetful character. All right. Oh, I'm gonna get roasted for that one. So Zane was a forgetful character for me. Not that I didn't like him. It was just he was there, but to me, he wasn't. So, yeah, space uh, in Lost Galaxy played into each other as well. They also had a crossover event. Morse. I liked that. That was Morse. And, yeah, that was our first major crossover event ever in the American version of Power Rangers. Please, please. That, that was fun. I loved it, that concept. It was so cool. Then Megaforce ruined it. I... Y'all had one job. Had one job. Megaforce. Megaforce, you have a job. And you failed at it. You failed at it. Your approach to the final battle was good at first, but having it constantly play in the hero's head was overkill. As we already knew, hey, it was going to happen. It was going to be there. But then, did it time and time and time again, it got freaking redundant. We got it. There's a major battle coming or, you know, like, you need to only do it, like, two or three times, not once every five episodes. The build-up to it was, like, so over-marketed. It was so overdone. The build-up to it was so stupid. We got it. But they kept egging it on. Ugh. My gripe is, if they did it once or twice or even three times, it'd be okay. Heck, if they did it less, not like once every five or six episodes, they did it like, oh, once every, like, maybe, I don't know, 10, 11 episodes? You know? Wow, not repeating the same thing. Some of these scenes were the same scene, done time and time again. I hated that. I hated that. That's so lazy. That was lazy. Ah! That was so freaking lazy. Ah! When you build up to something, you need to have each and every part of it different, original, standing out from the others. We literally rinse and repeat. It takes me off. It takes all fans off. Okay? It drives us nuts. It makes us angry. It makes us hate the series. Or the show. Or what you're working on. Or what you're doing. When you literally do the definition of freaking insanity, it literally makes insanity a thing. Your composure. Your composure. Let's just go. Then. And. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So, yeah, that was lazy. I will admit, it takes me off. There are certain forms of lazy I can accept, and there's certain I won't. Right? I really do not like when people follow the definition of insanity 
like this in this situation. And expect a different outcome. Even that of greater height. It's messed up. It's lazy. The more so irresponsible. One of the biggest sins of Megaforce is repeating the same sequences leading up to the final battle. It was not a good idea to rinse and repeat the same thing in the Red Ranger's head from Megaforce to Super Megaforce. They did this across both variants. If you ask me, one of the biggest sins of Megaforce was its lazy story writing and presentation of the final battle. That's why it failed. It was redundant, lazy, it was stupid, it was ignorant. It was even that of overdone. I did like the powers in Megaforce. I'm not going to lie. Mega Force and Super Mega Force. I didn't like the Mega Swords of Mega Force though. No, thank you. No, thank you. No, 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 no. Oh, those were some lazy Mega Sword designs. Oh no. Oh, me and no, 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 no. no. Simple no! <laughs> I did not like that. Nine, 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 no, 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 not. Do not do again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> why? Okay, why? I will mention the recent past new outfits of current Rangers to out of the last series. The reason why I didn't watch it, I saw the outfits. Hold on, like, let, let me search up the outfits of like oh the uh, Power Rangers from Netflix. E O W U R Power Rangers. Oh, I was thinking of Dino Charge when, like, the series went down. Yeah, that is... That's the one. So, hold on, like... I'm guessing it's in 2023? Three. No, it was in Wow, Netflix dropped that thing hard. I didn't even realize. Cosmic Fury. Like, hold on, let me look up Cos... Like... Okay, here it is, here it is. So, I want to bring this up because, like... These outfits. Original all... Oh. The Ranger first look of Cosmic Fury. Because these are not the original Cosmic Fury outfits. I will admit. What I see here. We're going to do like. A comparison. Between that of these outfits. On the Green Ranger outfit. And he was a horrible this Why? Like why? <sighs> why did they do this? Like like Rangers I, 
I do not like what they did with a. I, I want to get the suit in its prime though. Like Tommy in his prime because I want to show this man. So, oh, hold on. Word. One. Oh, C R L. Trying to get this done. No. no. I'm trying to get it to like. What the heck is going on here? All right, so I'm just gonna. Like, hold on. I'm gonna try to. So I want to bring this up. So this is, you know, Jason David Frank in his prime. Tommy, Evil Green Ranger, become good, right? Take a look at the design. Take a look at this design of the suit, okay? 100%. Look at it. Look at it. Now we go over here. What do you see? What What do you see what's almost similar? It's not only that of the look of like, oh, you know, they got shields. Like, this was supposed to be iconic to the original Green Ranger. And they gave them shields across their chest. This was supposed to be for only, like, the Green Ranger and White Ranger. They did this. I do not like this. But even more so, take a look at the designs of the suits. Not the armored parts. Armored parts, like, on the hands and stuff, it's, like, kind of original, and so is the belts. But take a look at the design of this suit in its prime. Now take a look at this. These suits are exactly the same. The material, the look, they're the same. The similarities are exactly there. I cannot stress this enough. When they made these suits to stand out, the only thing that stand out was the belts the arm got the arm wrists everything else is lazy lazy stupid irresponsible designs and i've even heard when these suits when they wore them on set they ripped so easily they were made out of cheap freaking material these suits are not only supposed to look stylish, but they're supposed to have that of a bit of like safety features for fire. I heard on set these suits caught fire. These things are supposed to be fire resistant for a reason. There's explosions on set. And if the suits are not fire resistant, what's the point? my major gripe with like all that what they did was so lazy of a design and the features of like how they were supposed to protect them on set weren't there they weren't fire resistant do you know how you endangered your actors you don't give them proper fire retardant outfits okay i heard they were somewhat fire retardant but not enough. When you do that, you literally say, you're there to entertain or you're there to die. And my gripe with this series is, and what they're doing is pulling away from the official continuity and putting America and like, you know, actors in danger to be original. Even these actors these days that do the shows, they have no pre previous knowledge. 
history or respect for what came before. Even the director of that series was like, I don't want to be here. I hate the Power Rangers. You know, I don't understand anything about them. They're dated. They're stupid. They're ugly. And they have no purpose in the modern day. That was the feelings of the fucking director. All right? When you have a cast, when you have a crew, when you have a director that has no respect for what came beforehand, you got what you got there. A show everyone hated and did not like. Megaforce also had this a bit of an issue. There was several people on set from the cast, the crew, and what I heard, even the director, that did not care for this series. When you have people in there that know nothing about the series or care about it, why are you even there? Why are you even there to do the role? You're there because you only want a paycheck and to become famous. Then you have no reason to be there in the first place. If you really do not care for the series and what came beforehand, you have no reason to be there. And that's like disrespectful. Not only to the franchise, not only to the past, the present, but future fans of the franchise. All right? The reason why this recent series has been dropped by Netflix is like, hold on, like, he, we're literally going to enter Power Ranger Show 2024. I'm going to open up the display capture. Take a look here. Like, hold on. I'm going to have to, like, make it bigger. Take a look here what it says. However, in 2024, it was announced the series would no longer be moving forward with Hasbro attempting to find a new showrunner to develop currently with the show in development due to Netflix exiting the agreement. I have theories on this. I have my thoughts. Of why Netflix did this. And one of the key factors is fans got upset. This is the key factor. Fans got upset. They complained. They hated that they were moving away from Super Sentai. It gave a bad image. What happens when a company makes a decision like this and fans get upset? They get a bad image. A bad image called Causes like for a show and products to lose sales and to lose views. What happens when you lose sales and views? Companies and investors pull out. When companies and investors pull out, the show suffers. When the show suffers, obviously because of the people in charge, it goes to bankruptcy and the show dies off. When you make decisions like this on a show, such as Power Rangers, something that has been around since 1993, current day, and you make some wild, stupid ass decisions like this, it destroys it all. This won't only just affect the American version. This will affect globally. We're talking about, you know, over the overseas, like over there or in Egypt or France or and all that kind of stuff. It's also going to affect Japan. This series will fall off because of what they have done. It's going to affect Super Sentai's image. Don't even get me started on the modern day toy market either. I've gone to my local stores, obviously, places like Walmart, Target, like obviously, you know, big lots, all nine yards. I even went to dollar stores. And like, 
unseen people buying these toys, and then after fear finding out, oh, this is freaking garbage. I hate this. The plastic's even more breakable, but more the the you know like functionality is so atrocious. I either throw this away or try to see some type of profit. I go to my local game stores in this in my town. I find out these people have been selling these toys to the game stores for a cheap buck. They buy them from the official store and sell it to like game stores that buy you know new or used toys and sell them to other people. One of these stores had enough of it. It was really over 13 months ago, I understand, they were like, yeah, we'll be only accepting the classical toys, or like the legacy toys, or Japanese imports of Power Rangers. None of the new crap. We don't want that shit. Thank God! Nobody wants the current new toys, not even me. Hasbro. What the hell are you doing? Jesus, mother freaking. And Christ for crying out for Zoran's sake. How bad do y'all gotta freak up? Okay? Before y'all realize your actions have repercussions. I will admit. I am thoroughly upset of what Netflix, Hasbro, and especially Hasbro, of what they're doing with the franchise. I only see one or two options for Hasbro right now. They see it as a cash cap. One or two options. Give up the franchise. Or... Fix your freaking house on the Power Rangers. Get actors and obviously people that care about the franchise to take up the roles. Fix the toy line. Fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it. Fix it. All of it. And fix yourselves. Fix it. Jesus! Fix yourselves! Ah! Yeah! Fix it! Okay? We're almost at 6 o'clock here where I am. You know, obviously. So, I'm gonna be honest. Ah. Uh, fix it! I want to mention I have met Austin St. John and both Jason David Frank at two prior conventions. Here in the US. A Comic Con in Texas. I met the Red Ranger first. Austin was awesome. He loved talking to me. Found out, oh, I was in Camp Trini. I said, I wish Trini never died. No, I wish she was still around, but I understand she had problems. And that's how we all felt. He asked, you had a chance to save her, would you? I said, time travel doesn't exist. But I truly believe even if time travel existed, and somebody tried to warn her about what was going to happen or save her from it, it would have happened sooner. It would have been worse. Chase, Austin looked at me. One of the real ones, aren't you? One of the ones that understand. You understand that no matter what could have happened, even if something like that did exist, it could be worse or even more so. No, she could become worse. 
No good would have come from it. Sometimes you just need to let the ones pass. Pass. So I that more than anyone may. Take to out his hand. Thanks. Hand. He grabbed my uh, arm with his other hand and pulled me forward, hugged me. He said, Thanks for being one of the real ones. Go. Watch it. I, hold, I hugged him back. We embraced each other. And it was a moment. It was a moment that I'll never forget. He's one of the actors that dreads. Obviously, Trini's passing the most. The actor behind Trini, he dreads the most of what happened to her, and I can understand that. I met Jason David Frank. Wait a minute, the Red Ranger was Jason. Austin. Yeah, no, Jason was like Tommy, so like, my bad. I, I get them too mixed up sometimes. I met him 2018 at a convention. Uh, I just want to do a little quick, quick recap of 2018. You cannot find these conventions, the convention of, that mentions him anymore, anywhere. Tommy's record has been wiped clean off the internet. Will mention it's there at that Comic Con convention. I met him. There was a kid in front of me that literally did like a spin kick. I thought that was so adorable but irresponsible. <laughs> Tommy was like, hey, that's pretty good. Keep it up. You'll be one of the best. I go, oh, when it was my turn, I said, man, I remember when I did that when I was a kid. Fell on my butt so many times. <laughs> he go, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, that takes practice. I said, yeah, but hugely irresponsible. He goes, yeah, it is. He goes, what's your name? I go, Devin Lionheart. Said, your last name, really, Lionheart? I said, nah, this is my YouTube tag, you know? He goes, oh, you're an online celebrity. Like, you're a streamer or something like that. I said, I'm a content creator, yes, on YouTube. I don't stream. Because at the time, I was still doing... I lost my, uh, you know, former, like, career of a Yu-Gi-Oh! content creator, and I was trying to be something else with PNG. Um, met the guy. I told him, like, man, I remember watching you as a kid. I remember, like, back then, they didn't have the message, don't do this at home. I said, I used to do it at school all the time, fighting off the bullies. He said shouldn't have done that. I go like, yeah, but I I did. I can't take it back. I can't take it back. All I can do is like be like, you know, when I talk to other people and they reminisce what they did as a kid in school watching Power so I'll be like, we were dumb, weren't we? I'd be like, we were dumb. <laughs> Okay. I'll be real. That's that's how I feel about like the nineties live action shows where they didn't have the message back then, like, don't do this at home. They only started doing that after like Zio. Uh, don't cop replicate this at home. I miss that. It was good. Like, little message lessons and messages to make the future generations more safe and better. I don't think that was taking away the parents' jobs. I think it was a step in the right direction. Teach kids how to be safe. How to do things right. You know? Parents saw that as taking that away from them. No. We're just being an insecure, arrogant prick. Because you didn't do it first. When you have a kid, when you're raising your own child, the fact of the matter is, 
You need to teach them these lessons as soon as they are smart enough to talk, to walk, to read, to really do anything. That is a parent's job. You're supposed to teach them, you know, these fundamentals. That's a parent's job. And there's a lot of parents that don't do that. And the one thing that taught these kids when the parents wouldn't or the schools wouldn't, because it's not a school's job to teach these kids these lessons either. It's the parents' job. But when the parents fail to do it, those like that back then, you know, G.I. Joe, no half the battle. No lessons. You had Power Rangers. Made the power protect you lesson. These made a better and stronger and smarter generation. Made them aware of the dangers, made them aware of the problems. It was to the point. I loved those lessons. My parents always taught me these lessons, but those little reminders were good. After each and every episode, they helped a generation. And when they were taken away, they helped many generations actually. When they were taken away, look where we're at now. Look where we're at now, okay? Those lessons made generations better. Our generations better and smarter. Now these things aren't a thing, and they're becoming more reckless, more dumb, more ignorant, more cancerous, more selfish, and unprepared. My thoughts on those lessons they were needed, okay? They were not only lessons, they were subtle reminders. United Nations didn't like that. Parents didn't like that. They took them away. I will admit when I met Tommy, uh, no, Jason, David Frank, the guy was real chill, real nice. Loved his fans. You could tell he loved being around his fans. Ishmahawk has had several meetings with this guy before he passed. Tommy was, Jason was such a goofy goober. He loved being who he was. He was a funny guy. He loved expressing himself. He loved being a nerd. He was naturally a nerd. He loved that. We loved that. It's people like Jason David Frank that really set a good example for people. And I love that about him. When he passed, when I learned that, and I had his autograph. I, when I learned he passed, I cried myself to sleep at my own fucking man. An iconic, an iconic character. A man that had thousands, millions of fans, not only across the US, but the world. Passed away. I cried myself to sleep. It hurt. It hurt my and wait, I'm going to lie. My father took it as grow the fuck up. People live, people die. You know? He was an actor. He meant nothing. My father didn't understand the subtle importance of what he completed, what he did, what he's done. My father couldn't understand any of that, what these people have done, how they've done it, how it's affected the world in a positive way. To him, they're just actors. They have no importance, no meaning. The way he was raised and taught how to believe how actors are. Between me and my stepfather, he is like oil. I am like water. No, like 
I was gravity, modern gravity. He was anti-gravity. All right? We were so different. We were so separate and divided in our last couple of years and constantly growing up. We had different views. We had different takes. We could get along from time to time. But I don't know what to tell y'all. Other than in some families, fathers and sons fight a lot. When they fight, it's not only a form of disrespect, but it's trying to resolve your issue. Yes, it's disrespectful, but you have different views, different thoughts, and you're trying to resolve them. Because the other one doesn't want to resolve it. When they fight like this, fathers and sons, they shouldn't, but find out they have no way to resolve their issue. So different. Me and my stepfather, we were so different. We couldn't resolve our issue. So, when I mentioned, you know, obviously my last video about my father, and y'all may have found out, oh, previous videos of my father have been private. Rightfully so. Last time I was in contact with my father for like people taking care of him, um, influenced him to block me, was chased you away. So you didn't find another. Awesome. Chased me away for my own welfare and future. He knew I had to grow as a He knew I had to change. Something drastic had to happen. He did this. And he knew the people that were taking care of him wouldn't be able to help me whatsoever. That wasn't their goal. They were only taking care of my father so they can claim what was his. They also wanted to put me my abilities. The, the people that were taking care of my father, they're incapable of understanding. They don't care about anyone other than their own selfish desires. I left my home. My childhood home. Not only because now I know my father was but I knew I had to grow as a person. And I'm making it every day. I'm surviving every, every day by the skin of my teeth. And what does a hero do? They survive. And they not only survive, they save lives. How, in a way, when you think about survivors, like when some people will say, oh, you survived that, you're a real hero. In a way, he's kind of like a lone surviving hero. He is a hero while not being a hero. It's a common misconception about lone survivors that survive on their own and are called a hero because of you're a hero, but you're not one. It's a really weird trope. It's it's really weird. But it is a thing. It really is a thing. There's heroes of all shapes and sizes, whether they be real or fictional. Rather, it's an officer. Rather, it's a, you know, like obviously medical personnel. Rather, it's like a soldier, a navy man, a SWAT, a a fireman. You know, the fire department. Heck. Maybe it was just some common person that saved the per child from being hit on the road because the child didn't look both ways. 
there's heroes all around us. They don't need to have superpowers to be a hero. Heroes are there. They can be found. When I released the video of Dr. My Feelings on Dr. Disrespect and how he disrespected content creators, he not only disrespected all of us, he disrespected his fan base. He was irresponsible. He was looked at as someone to look up to, a hero. He had an image to uphold as a content creator and even that of a man. People looked up to this man. And when that came to light, and now the worst of it is now out, he really became the villain. His family is going to have the hardest time now because of his actions. His wife, his child are probably going to end up leaving him. I'm not going to color code it. Dr. Disrespect. You fucked up. You fucked up. And now you're going to have to reap the repercussions. When people fuck up, it is hard to fix it like this. The way he fucked up, he'll probably never live it down. He'll never be able to fix it. Never be able to adjust it either. That's why I said in, at the end of the video, Dr. Disrespect, it's my, my professional opinion, you need to retire. Right now, what you need to do, after your vacation, because I know this guy's on vacation right now, he needs to retire and disappear with his family. Because if he comes back on the internet, he will be constantly attacked, harassed, and even accused of things that not only he did do, but didn't do. His actions not only affected him, but disrespected so many others. Truth of the fact of the matter is, when you're a content creator, people look up to you. They see what you do. Rather, you're a 2D VTuber, 3D VTuber, or even that of a fourth dimensional content creator, a real human being, these people look up to us. They see us do things they think are the greatest thing in the world. And when you make mistakes like that, it is damaging, not only to your career, but to everyone that looked up to you. I saw you as a beacon of light. A hope for the future. Dr. Disrespect. I'm going to end this stream with a message to you. I don't know enough about you, about uh, anything about you or your content. But what I do know, that right now, as a man, you need to take your family after vacation, all of your things, and retire from online. Disappear for a good hot while and find a normal job, or at least try to. And be a functioning human of society. You can't do it online anymore. You're incapable of it. Destroyed your own career. You demolished it. No one will ever see you in the same light again. That's true. Thank y'all so much for joining me on this live stream. I think I went a little bit into deep today. Um, the surprise attack. I think I'll save the Power Rangers movie for another time. I'm drained. <laughs> on this one. Just talking about Power Rangers being so riled up and exposed upset of like what's happening to the franchise and finally covering the last bit of Dr. Disrespect that I should have covered, covered in the video I think was needed right now because yeah 
I think I will react to Power Rangers, Tur Power Rangers, you know, the movie, sometime next week. All right? Because right now, like, my mental state is dread. Talking about all of this. Let it be known. For what? There's heroes all around. Real ones. Just... You're in trouble. Be the real hero. Not a fictional. Don't be afraid to cry out for help when people are around. But somewhere in that crowd is a real hero. They make the right decision. Not always. Sometimes. heroes out there. You just have to be strong enough when you're in trouble to ask or scream for help. Don't be silent. Last thing you need to be silent in any form of danger or pain. If you keep things capsuled in, don't Tell people about it. If you don't ask for help, worst thing you can ask. When you need help, need ask for it. You can scream for it. You need get it by any means necessary. Heroes out there, real ones. I may play the head of a mer an emergency response YouTuber that does mercenary mission rank up of his car his rank in a fictional story that hasn't come out yet. But I'm not a real hero. Here on the screen is a person who always wanted to be one. But can't. Thank y'all so much for joining me on. I got another art to complete. This news like brain show of my background. One of the arts I just completed in a way that I thought acceptable, been original and different. I wanted to show it off. Today. I'm going to show off other unique styles, of course. I have been committed by registration number zero zero. I made that clear. Yes. Zero zero one. Registration. My YouTuber's post reflect that. Of that of heroic faction. And my powers are supposed to be with my VTuber the benefit of all life. I am not a villain. I am not a criminal. I'm not a warlord. I am an emergency response hero on a universal scale. So are the others. Mercenary mission. Upgrade our rank. And a thing. I will always entertain. Be by yourself. The right thing. Thank you so much. Watch out.